Hey everybody, it's Jim Johnson here, the head coach at Contractor Coach Pro and your host on Contractor Radio. Uh, we are pumped to have you here today. Uh, my guest is an absolute all-star. I cannot not wait to introduce him. Uh, the whole goal of this show is to help you get better at what you do through strategy, tactics, entertainment, and education. And uh, the person that's going to be talking with us today uh, I, I look at him as uh, one of those voices of wisdom. He's one of those guys that uh, whenever he walks in a room, everybody else kind of gets quiet and wants to hear what he has to say. And uh, I've been wanting to bring him on for a long time. Uh, I finally convinced him and tricked him into being on the show. And so uh, we're going to get to that guest in just one minute. Give us a second here to uh, bring one of our sponsors on. We got to pay the bills. And uh, we'll, we'll get started with the show here shortly. Ricky Harmon with Balance Claims. I'm here in the Balance Claims office to help answer one of the questions I hear all the time. Why use Balance Claims? Well, I have two of the account managers here, Travis Croft and Emily Caldwell, to answer just that. Contractors should use us because we have experts on site that are well-versed in Xactimate, able to write our estimates and make sure that your claims have everything accounted for, making sure that you're paid out correctly. Contractors should use balance claims because we are hassle-free. You have the time to focus on the homeowners and the sales for these roofs while we focus on the insurance claims for you. That is where time is money and we are here to help you. So you heard it from our AMs. There are multiple reasons why you need to be working with Balanced Claims. If you want to reach out to us, our email is success at balancedclaims.com or you can reach out to me directly, Ricky Harmon at 317-360-0903. Talk to you soon. All right, that was a little message from Balanced Claims for you restoration contractors out there. Uh, the folks at Balanced Claims have been my friends since they got into this. And uh, they do a great job of helping you administer your claims, get them done quicker and more profitable than you would do before. And uh, so if you're looking to get that done, go and check them out at success at balanceclaims.com. Ricky Harmon is your man. All right, today we're gonna be talking about uh, a, a very important trait. I don't wanna give it away, but it's the most important trait uh, that we can have not only as business owners and leaders, but I believe as just human beings. And uh, I've brought a special guest on today uh, that's gonna share with us uh, some of his thoughts on that subject. And like I said, this is a guy that you wanna pay attention to, listen to, because he brings great value every single time he opens his mouth. Reggie Brock from Beacon, welcome aboard, buddy. Good to have you. Hey, hey Jim, it's always good to be with you and excited about being on Contractor Radio. Uh, we uh, couldn't be happier. Uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. You and I have yeah. known of each other for quite a while. I'm probably a decade or more at least. Um, and then we, we kind of connected a couple of times at, uh, at some events, but just a short little thing. And uh, then we got the opportunity to, to hang out for a little bit. And uh, you, you actually interviewed me for a, a thing that you were doing. And uh, I really enjoyed not only that conversation, but uh, the conversation after, like getting to know you and and, uh, and and understanding a little bit more what you're about. So so give us the Reader's Digest story of Reggie Brock. Like how did you get to where you are today and kind of let everybody know what it is that you do? Well, thanks again, Jim, for uh, letting me join you today. And, you know, I agree with you. <clears throat> we've known of each other the last 10 years, but we've gotten fellowship together uh, over the last couple of uh, year, really, and it's been exciting for me. But from a historical standpoint, I spent most most of my adult career uh, in the insurance business. I did everything from claims to policy construction to you know developing uh, offices for two major five hundred. Uh, uh, what do you call them? Five hundred. Inc. Five hundred. There you go. I worked for them. I wasn't smart like them, and so. <laughs> I, I helped build out offices for these guys. And really, um, in 2010, um, 9, 29, 2009, our family just had a major disruption because I made some bad choices, uh, really bad choices that, you know, really took us to the bottom of the barrel in every way. And we hightailed it to Texas. You know, we didn't have a whole, a, a, long, a, a lot of root system much anywhere. Our family was there. So we moved over there and I started literally knocking doors and selling roofs for a roofer there 
uh, in Burleson, Texas. And, you know, when my nephew, who's a home builder, told me, he said, hey, I, I got something you can do. He said, it's roofing. And I told him, dude, it ain't that bad yet. And so, you know, it kind of spurred me into it. And I, I really just started knocking doors. First storm I worked was the San Antonio storm of 2010. Uh, or maybe 11, I can't remember when it was. No, it was 2010, 2010. And, you know, <clears throat> learned a lot from the ground up. Didn't know a whole lot about roofing, but I knew a lot about policy. So it was pretty easy for me to kind of walk into that world. Uh, I really had a focus at that point on, you know, getting deductibles and working a claim from a standpoint that I knew was the right way to do things, even though the crowd was really not in favor of those type of techniques. Um, and so I got some notoriety there. People started asking me to come in and do some training for them to get the same thing. Long story short, I went to work with an MRP and learned that side of the business. And over the last three or four years, I started talking to Michael Carver, Greg Bloom, and those some of their leaders at Beacon and just kind of worked out uh, be two years this November. I'm at Beacon, very, very happy living in uh, Florida. Life's good, Jim. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, when I heard that you went to Beacon, I was like, wow, what a, what a great fit. Just uh, uh, all things about Reggie have always spoken highly of, of how you see things. Uh, and you do that. In a, and I don't want to give it away yet because I'm trying to avoid a word that we're going to use here in just a few minutes. But um, I, I've always thought of you as a man of this thing. And uh, we, we're talking today about what um, I feel, at least, is the most important trait that we can have as a leader and really as a human being. And, uh, and so uh, I want to talk a little bit about character. Yeah. You're passionate about it. You, you, you believe in it. Could you like just briefly, if you can, I, I don't know if that's a brief thing because character is such a big thing, but briefly describe what it means to be a person of, because character could be good or bad, but we want to talk about good character, I hope. What, is, what does that mean to you? Well, I think you have to define what you feel character really means. And to me, it's really the mental and moral qualities that are distinctive to a specific individual, right? I mean, it's the things that tell our story, not the words that come out of our mouth, but the deeds that we perform. And that's sometimes very, very difficult for us to really accept. We think that we can talk our way out of anything. And the reality of it is we live our way out of things or put ourselves in things because of the decisions that we make, the choices that we make. And, you know, I, I, you and I have talked about this before. The, there is a rising up in our industry uh, that uh, is tapping into this very important notion called character. Um, and because people are wanting to change, they're, they're really wanting to have not just character, but good character and not just living a life, but living a good life. And to me, it's just those distinctive markings that make me, me, and you, you, and defines us to other people. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know this term is always one of those terms that's been taken and really kind of put into a, a bad light nowadays, but we're all like snowflakes almost when it comes to character. Everybody's unique and and, and they're, they're um, distinctive. Like you can tell them apart by, by their deeds and what they do. You mentioned something that's really like uh, being very noticeable to me right now. You said there's a rising up in our industry yeah. um, and specifically the roofing industry, but home services contractors in general, we work with a lot of different trades and I'm seeing it in this particular one of roofing, but I'm seeing it in a lot of others as well. What do you think is, is driving this um, idea of really like doing things right? I mean, that's yeah. kind of where the character lands for me. Um, what, what do you think is driving that? So I think our inner man is screaming at us, saying things can get better, but it's not always about changing your exterior life that creates those things. I think every one of us has a built-in uh, component in us that sees past just what happens around us. It looks at what's happening in us. And I think that there is a huge cry out right now. I mean, guys, folks are starting to see their lives um, really not as complete and whole as they want it. And they're looking around them for answers. And I think what's happening is they're now starting to sense that 
there's things inside of me that have to change so that the outside experiences that I'm wanting can actually come to being. And so I, I really think that's it, Jim. I think that there's been a ton of focus on exterior things for all of us. I mean, we go to conferences and they're all great. I mean, there's a lot of training. There's a lot of development on getting better from an exterior standpoint. I mean, it's just actions and deeds and techniques and trainings and procedures. Again, all for it. We got great people doing that. But I think there's an unanswered question in the lives of many people saying this. Why am I still feeling empty? I said, I said that I still can't seem to have a meaningful relationship with the important people around me. And so it's driving them not to look for answer to answers from other people or other places, but inside. And so I think that's the big reasons why that, that you're seeing unrest and uneasiness and people making turns because their life is headed in a direction they don't want to. Listen, everybody can make a comment on your life, but you're the only one that could change your life. And I think right now what's happening is that stirring is happening and people are going, life could be better, but I need to start inside and work out. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> uh, I was hoping uh, that you would bring the heat like that. And, uh, and, and <laughs> it, is, uh, it is something that is palpable. You can feel it. Um, there's... Uh, there's uh, a tangible um, results of it. I, I think some of it is um, the the folks internally are sitting there going, something's not quite right. And there, right. There's, something's just not feeling the way I thought it would feel whenever I did this thing or became this thing. And and, I, and I'm, I'm kind of lost. I, I don't know what that is. And then they start looking around them and they start noticing these companies that are really sticking out. And they notice that they're not sticking out because of how much money they make or the cars they drive or the planes they fly. Although that does grab attention. Right. Um, the thing that seems to be grabbing the most attention is this idea that you can do this business and do it right and get that fulfillment, I think, that we're all looking for um, as human beings. You talk about the inner man. Um, I, I believe this concept is uh, uh, uber important for this conversation because we're constantly in this space of comparing ourselves to everybody else. And uh, so that's the external man. You're like looking at that person going, hey, that person has done this and I've only done this. And so um, I'm not as good as that person or the reverse of that. I've done this thing over here that's amazing. And that guy's only done that. That makes me better than him. But in the end, when you're by yourself and you're reflecting on those thoughts, it feels like there's just something missing. And I think that's that, that inner man talking to us. Can you dive into that a little? What do you, what yeah. do you think that is that's actually like driving that emotion? So a lot for me, and I'll speak for me, a, a, a lot for me is I've never really accepted the authentic me, right? I always wanted to be something that I couldn't find in me. I've always run after things that I've never been able to accomplish myself because somebody else did it. It automatically made me think that's what I want. So the authentic Reggie is somebody in many times of my life. And some of it's been because I've screwed up so often, right? I've just, I've always looking at somebody else, what they're doing, how they're doing and thinking if I could be that man, life would be great. And I think what's happening is men are starting and women are starting to realize that who they are, Jim, is who they are. And how do I build that out? And if it happens to run into lanes of other people doing more successful things, so be it. But I have got to become content with who I am. Because listen, no matter what you want to do and how you want to phrase it, we are who we are. And there can we change? Of course we can change. But there's DNA issues in all of us that really don't allow us to look like or be like somebody else. Now, does it mean that the testimony and the lifestyles of other people that we see successful uh, is bad, a bad thing? Absolutely not. We need goals. We need ambitions. We need push. But at the end of the day, before all of that else can happen, you've got to be comfortable being you. And when you start sorting that and feeling that, life will start changing. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I noticed this. Um, as I, I'm an observant person, I, I, I like to just kind of watch and, and observe. 
And uh, I noticed there's there's people out there, um, whether they're on Facebook or Instagram, social media and stuff like that. And sometimes you hear them almost crying out, you know, this yeah. um, this this feeling of like, well, why don't people want to hang out with me? I actually had a picture of a guy on Facebook the other day. He was sitting on his bed all alone and he shared about what it felt like to be alone. And uh, and it bothers me. Like it, it's one of those things that hurts me inside because I think the thing they're missing is this authentic them. They're trying to be something else. They're trying to push the situation or the relationship or the the um, the acceptance instead of just accepting who they are first. And once they accept who they are, first, like me, this all happened to me 17 years ago in a in a fit of. Uh, um, uh, Holy Spirit jumping on top of me and just going, hey, man, you need to change your ways. And uh, and that was for me. Like everybody's a little bit different about how this comes about for them. It can be a slow progression or just something that's like the snap of a finger. But um, once I realized like it was OK to kind of just be me, um, because uh, being me may not be what everybody goes as the cool guy. Right. Like that, everybody wants to be the in crowd, the cool guy, the whatever, right? And they like carry this almost high school type feel yeah. throughout the rest of their life, uh, this clicky type thing. And what I realized is um, I'm pretty goofy, like naturally just kind of goofy. I, mean, I wouldn't call myself funny necessarily. Um, I tend to smile a lot and that's okay. I don't have to be Mr. Business all the time. I don't have to wear a suit and tie to get my thing done. Um, I can share my faith and that's okay. Um, I can I can talk genuinely and authentically to you and not in a way that's like, hey, would you be my friend? It's like, I'm genuinely interested in you. Like, hey, let's, let's just talk. And that's worked so much better for me than trying to push this forced relationship. You mentioned a word earlier and I want to I want to dig into that one before we get into uh, some of the other stuff, but you mentioned this word fellowship. And so many folks talk about relationship. Uh, I want to be in a good relationship with somebody. I want to I want to uh, have a lot of relationships because business is all about relationships, right? But you use the word fellowship and being in fellowship with me and I, I really appreciate it and I believe likewise with you. Can you explain the difference between those two things? Yeah, I'm in relationship with a lot of things. I'm kind of in relationship with this chair I'm sitting in today. I'm, I'm relating to it to hold me up, right? And so we have relationships. We talk about relationships, and they're important, and everybody has them. But fellowship is intimacy. Fellowship is where we start digging deep with one another and truly looking at all good, bad, and indifferent. And we accept it, right? And so fellowship to me is at another level. I mean, it's where we break bread. And I don't mean just sitting around a table and just talking uh, endlessly for three hours at a conference. I'm, I, I mean, where life is broken together, right? And we start seeing and start feeling and start observing and start caring for and start asking questions that matter to somebody else about their life that can help them. That's fellowship. It, that That's a whole lot different than having just a you know, kind of general relationship, and there's nothing wrong with relationships. I'm glad this relationship I got with this chair this morning is doing what it would. But to go deeper, it, it, it takes you into a level of fellowship, uh, which is more intimate. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll go back to faith aspect of things. Christ seemed to me to only be in fellowship with 12 people. He was in relationship with a lot of other folks and, and he knew who they were and knew a lot of them, but he was truthfully in fellowship with those 12 people because he knew what their responsibility was going to be uh, at some point. And uh, can, do you believe you can be in fellowship with everybody or is it normally like a smaller group? Like I can have a lot of relationships and those are great and wonderful, but um, it seems to me like fellowship is, is it takes a lot of energy. Like it just does. Well, and I think the connection is what creates the difference, right? The connection between a relationship and a, and someone you're in fellowship with. And, and you, I mean, you brought up a good point. I mean, and think through, uh, you know, think through businesses, you know, the businesses that, you know, have great team leadership, those guys are in fellowship 
intimate relationship to drive the culture of the company. And so, I mean, from a biblical perspective, you're absolutely right. Uh, our Lord did not have 40 people close to him. He chose 12. And the reason they were 12 was because he knew that there was a work that they had to focus on from a macro standpoint, right, that only they could really filter and process in their head. Very selective. And so, yeah, to your to your question, I think that fellowship generally is far fewer in our lives in terms of uh, us being in a fellowship relationship, if you will, than having a bunch of friends at different relationship levels. All right, I want to I want to come back in just a second. We got we got to get one of our sponsors in here. You know, even though we're we're here sharing about some pretty important stuff, uh, we do still have a business. We do still got to get the bills yeah. paid. We're going to get those guys queued up here and we'll be right back. We want to come back and talk about, uh, you know, this this trait of character. We want to talk a little bit more about that and then kind of sub traits that determine what a person's character is all about. Sounds good. When you're looking for shingles, you need to look for that Scotchgar brand that Atlas has on the shingles to know that you're getting protection against those black streaks caused by algae. I think the Scotchgar is an important part of it. And they're literally putting their science into the product. It eliminates all streaking on the roofs. Everyone knows Scotchgar. So it gives it some legitimacy. When we go into a home to sell a roof, uh, you know, and the Scotchgar branding's on our samples or on our literature. I mean, it, it is recognized. Homeowners can't tell you what kind of brand of shingle that they, they have, but they can tell you that it has Scotch Guard. Husbands, but most importantly, wives. The women know Scotch Guard. You go into that house and you say, you're gonna have a clean roof. It's backed by Scotch Guard. Wow. Everything comes with Scotch Guard. Our new couch came with Scotch Guard. Our new chair came with Scotch Guard. Hey, you got Scotch Guard on your furniture. Now we got it on shingles for you. No more black algae. It's just that brand recognition. So the client just feels really comfortable. It definitely builds credibility as well. When we present an Atlas shingle to a customer and we tell them that this has a Scotch Guard warranty backed by 3M, the trust is there. We feel more confident that they feel confident in us that we're giving them a product that's going to last for the life of the roof. You're not only selling the color, then you're selling the long lasting color and it lasts for a lifetime. Sold. Done deal. If I can put on all Atlas products and avoid any type of streaking and drive by that roof 10 years from now and it looks like like the day we put it on that's what i'm looking for that's the peace of mind i want to give my customers it's just an easy sell all right that was a little message there from atlas i love the folks at atlas and what they do for contractors there their character and how they help out with uh, the contractors that are in their network uh, is, is really strong. It's why there's such good alignment with us and them. So if you're looking for a way to uh, add some value to your sales process uh, and the products you offer, go check out Atlas. They're amazing. All right, Reggie, let's, let's dig into the character thing and this, this rising up in our industry. So um, I've noticed uh, over the, the past few years that there was a shift happening in how people were going about business. And I think a lot of that was driven by social media in general, this uh, access to information that if you didn't do things well, everybody knew about it, right? Like we could share that information really fast. Like it could give you bad reviews on Google. They could uh, talk about you all through their neighborhood groups. And, and so you, you couldn't do maybe some of the shadier things that used to happen in our industry anymore. And so I think that was one of the driving factors of why um, there's a bit of a shift in our industry, but people started to realize it was successful. Like you could do it right and things were good. And then here in the last couple of years, I've noticed um, people truthfully taking a position of character and saying, this is who we are and what we're all about, whether it's storm into the new era, uh, which is where you and I really got uh, well connected. Um, there's uh, roofers in recovery, which are helping guys that have uh, alcohol and substance abuse. Uh, there's there's contractor fellowship, this group that uh, we put together, and uh, we we meet with uh, people trying to figure out the whole uh, walk with God thing, and, and whether they are Christian or not Christian, everybody is welcome. Uh, there there seems to be more and more of this um, as time has moved on. 
you say this inner man is what's driving us for that. And uh, that's kind of determining this character that we may want to become. Because I think you can be one type of character and become another character. Would you agree with that? Of course. Yeah, absolutely. So we're not so, defined by a moment. Go ahead. Yeah. It, it, that's one of the great things about being a human being, even when the bad stuff happens, right? Like I've had, like your story, I've had plenty of like, man, it's, it's not good. Um, very selfish, very me oriented. Um, literally people to me were uh, pawns and stuff in a game of chess, treated them like a dollar figure. I uh, just uh, really kind of an awful human being. And, and uh, all that changed for me. Like, okay, I, I need to do something different. And I, I got into this um, position of saying, I got to serve people. And it literally changed my character overnight. Uh, it was like I became a different person. And ever since I've become that di different person from a genuine and authentic place of saying, I want to serve you and I want nothing in return, the return has been amazing. Um, God has truthfully blessed uh, my family, my business, the, the, my relationships with the people I'm in fellowship with. It is uh, a thing I sit there every day and reflect on like, man, this is just awesome. I wish everybody would do this. And so that's, that's kind of my character journey. Um, it's hard though. Um, you got to be consistent. It, the, everybody's looking for that opportunity where you don't do what they're kind of expecting you to do. If they think you're one thing, Sometimes things are taken out of context on social media and stuff, but all I can do is control what I can control. And so this character that we talk about, what are the, what are the components or maybe sub traits that determine yeah. your character? So interestingly enough, what you just said is the beginning point to me of a change uh, in character from maybe a mediocre or bad character to a good one. And that is what I basically call you come to yourself. Listen, you don't, very few of us listen to meaningful to other people until it is a desire of our own, right? I mean, I, you know, this last week, you and I, uh, we were at a conference and I heard some testimonies of guys getting up there talking about their old life. Listen, sometimes your life gets so bad, it forces change. It ain't like you're just so lovingly wanting to do stuff. But when you hit rock bottom, it, you know, you've got to make a change or you know, nothing changes. And so I think what's happening first is people come to themselves and they realize, oh my God, if you, in the Bible, the Bible talks, everybody knows the story of the prodigal son. Listen, the father didn't send out a bunch of soldiers or a bunch of uh, servants to get this kid out of the pig pen. When his life changed is when the, and the Bible says this, he came to himself. So I think for good character to replace bad character, good decisions and take bad decisions. It takes one realizing and coming to themselves and thinking, heck, I don't know what's going to happen here, but this can't go on. I've got to get up, make a change and move on. Now, some of the sub traits, Jim, you know, I, I think character it defines is defined as we've talked about, but the traits are seen and reflected in number one, I would think your choices. You know, when you're moving from a mediocre or a neutral uh, place of regarding your character, which I don't think there is, there's either good or bad, and you're wanting to have more character, good character in your life, you've got to make better choices. I mean, we can talk about character development when it comes to conflict resolution. Most of us who have dominant personalities want to dominate everybody around us, and it only causes more strain and conflict. You know, you can talk about multiple things when it comes to traits of uh, character, good character when it's revealed, but that would be a couple of them I would start with. All right, so I, I was writing there, so that's a, that, was, <laughs> that was for the pause. So uh, first two aspects uh, of this, and, and you were being nice to everybody. And, and you kind of finish it there at the end. You're like, eh, there's really good or bad. There's not much in between. Right, 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 right. Um, and neutral means that uh, you're a hermit and you live nowhere and nobody's in right. contact with you. Uh, there's bad character and there's good character. And and yeah. we have to come to this. Uh, I, it was a come to Jesus moment for me. <laughs> it was like, okay, that's bad. 
this is good which way you want to go because if you continue down the path you're going to go it's just going to get worse or um, you can decide to follow this other path that's different and, and maybe that's what it was for me like I wasn't feeling very fulfilled in what it was uh, that I was after and what I was doing what I was trying to achieve and accomplish in life and I'm like well I can't keep repeating what I was doing because that's not working for me um, so I got to try something different so that was that was my choice and so there's component one, like the choices we make, we make a decision to do something about it. But it's not just that one decision. It's every decision after that, every choice, every action, every everything you choose to do from that point forward has to be in alignment, I believe, with that um, uh, new path that you're on. Would you agree with that? Oh, 100 percent. You know, I think the choices going forward are just the check mark of your commitment, right? If you're not, even if you say, yes, I'm making a change and I'm going to treat people better. I'm going to talk to treat people better. I'm going to lead better. I'm going to have a better marriage. Your next choice is going to confirm or deny that. Right? <laughs> and so, you know, that's what people don't realize. It's like I, saying I'm something, but not living that makes, has no impact on people. Again, let me say that. Saying you are something and living not according to that limits your impact on people. People can sniff out a fraud, right? And so, you know, all the way from the closest people to you to those from a distance, you know. And so I think you're, to your point, the next choice is the one that check marks the commitment that you've either made or you've talked about making. And, you know, so the next and the next and the next and the next verify the decisions and the choices you're making as committed. Yeah, I became very mindful of those choices uh, from that point forward, which is something I wasn't very mindful. I just did, right? I did for my own selfish needs and, and that kind of yeah. stuff, where after that moment, it was like, all right, uh, well, this thing I'm about to do is that the, the, the thing that I need to do according to the path I've chosen. And I was very mindful of it in the beginning. And, and I want to like share something with everybody. You're going to make bad choices still. Yeah. I mean, just because you decide you're going to go on this path, we still make bad choices. We're human beings. It's what happens. But to having this awareness of it, this mindfulness of it, you recognize them for what they are. They stick out more. And uh, you, you start to get back on that path. And so it became this thing where because I was mindful of it, I thought more about it. And I was a little bit more... Um, aware of the decisions I was making. And I had to really work at that. I, I put things in front of me to you know, like, I had things up that said, make good choices, serve others and things like that, just as a reminder. And it's really become a habit now. And I'm by far not perfect, like, but it's really become this, like when a decision that needs to be made, I don't have to think about it near as much anymore. It's become more natural and more habit. Uh, do you see yeah. that in people? Like, do you see All that? The time. And, and I want people to hear on this conversation, you making a bad decision on your next choice does not make you a bad person, right? And so this is a habit. This is like everything else. Everything we do in life that matters to us becomes a habit. And sometimes things we don't want to be and don't want to become, become habitual in our lives. But just being mindful, and that's a great word you use, being mindful of every choice that defines you to those around you is like really, really important. Are we perfect? Nope. But being mindful of, they, I, I hated doing that, making that same decision again. What can I do to correct and move forward? Um, I think is critical. And then all of a sudden it becomes habitual and it becomes something where you're going like, uh, you, your triggers are different and when it come, when you're confronted with a decision and a choice like that. Yeah, I can remember walking away from decision or from interactions early on and going, did I treat that person like a person or a pawn or dollar sign? Like, I, and I and I would have to ask myself that. And I was like, oh man, I, I did it again. Gosh, those are bad habits. Gotta get rid of them. And, and I would go and repair that as quickly as I possibly could. Um, the second part of it was conflict resolution. Yeah. This ability to have a conversation with somebody um, in a way that uh, hopefully builds a bridge instead of putting up a wall. Um, we tend to throw our opinions around uh, like nobody's business, and uh, we we don't we don't consider the impact 
that that's going to have on somebody else. Whatever it is that we post on social media, we share in a small group, we're at a conference talking with somebody, and we throw this opinion out that we, and we may believe very strongly in it, um, but what it does, it puts these barriers up between people that they now no longer want to interact with you. And so that's one side of conflict resolution. And then there's the other side where I have a, relationship or fellowship with somebody and uh, something comes up and there, there's conflict. Uh, what, what's some of your viewpoints on handling that conflict resolution that'll yeah. do that character? So um, I think the reason we're lousy at conflict resolution is all we think about is winning, right? And I'm not saying that winning is not important because it, it is, it is, but at what cost, right? And so yeah, I, I think that we can change and adapt our conflict resolution style and be very impactful, especially on the people around us. But I think that's what it boils down to. You know, we go into conflict and think some I got to win or they're going to win. And the fact of the matter is, how is there a way and an opportunity in the situation that one that finds himself where everybody can walk away still feeling together, right? You know, most conflict drives us apart. Sometimes, though, with proper conflict in a great relationship, it iron sharpens iron, right? And that, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you go into a conflict with an employee or a family member or, you know, whoever it may be, you know, and your only ambition and thought when it comes to a conflict and resolving it is I've got to win and until I win, we're going to keep bleeding one another, you know, until that mentality kind of, it gives way to the, what you use the word repair. What is it that, where can we find the balance in this so that, you know, uh, there is a, I mean, this is not like a, particip a participation trophy we're giving to everybody, but it's like, how do we, how do we maintain disagreement without tearing each other's head off and ruining the relationship? And so, it, or we start closing people off or they start closing us off because there's that constant aggressiveness in us that we just have to win. And until we can resolve that, I don't think we repair much. Do you, do you think um, this human need to have a reason that something didn't go right or that I didn't win? We, we, we use this um, uh, thing that... Uh, I've been very aware, I've been studying a lot about this blame. I want to blame somebody else for whatever has happened to me. Do you think that has a lot to do with why we get into so much conflict? Yeah, well, I think it's we want to be able to blame other people and we want to be able to, you know, just not assume responsibility and accountability for our part in whatever it is, right? And sometimes you don't have a part. Listen, sometimes it's nobody's mistake. Sometimes it's just the ebb and flow of life that hits us all at the wrong time and we come in contact with each other and it's just bad timing, you know? So the, I, I think the thing that's important to me that shows good character is that we mature in how we deal with conflict because it's coming. It don't matter what level of life you're in, no matter who you're in it with, conflict is coming because we have that distinct different fingerprint. Our DNA looks different. We see life different. Look, my wife and I have been married 31 years. I know you're shaking your head. How could she last that long? <laughs> and, and I would tell you, she would tell you probably 17 of the 31 years has been really good for her, right? The other 16 or whatever, or 15, and kind of, yeah, we've had some ups and downs. But the fact is we had to learn. We still have to every day learn how to interact in times of conflict so we just don't tear each other's heads off and say something and do something and you know, that you're going, you know, all of us have had that. Oh my God, do I have to, you know, after we've done it and been through it, we feel guilty about it. Those are the times where we have to learn from and find some other way to resolve our conflicts, though they're going to be there for our, the rest of our life. It's maybe the most valuable thing that uh, there's two or three really powerful things that have uh, uh, impacted my life from this contractor fellowship group. Um, and, and one of those things is this idea of blame. And, uh, and so uh, we had a conversation about that. And Reggie was the one that kind of opened my eyes. I was grateful and thankful to you for this. Because um, uh, I'm always in this state of improvement. I hadn't really thought about it before. And, 
And I am that person. I'm like, it's either your fault or my fault. There is no possibility that it just might not be anybody's fault. And so you bringing that up that, and I think the words we use with crap just happens, right? Like right. It, it's nobody to blame. So anytime I get into conflict now, I put it through this lens. And the first thing I do is I look at myself. Did I cause this? What did I do to, to possibly bring this about? The second lens I put it through is, is anybody at fault or is it just happening? And then the third lens is, is the other party playing a part and how do I repair that? And so I try to go through that lens and I, I want to thank you for that. That's, that's a, this is a personal thank you because while those things didn't all happen at the same time, we've had different discussions that all led to this lens for me. It has tremendously helped me in interacting uh, with other folks and, and I'm grateful for your wisdom there. It was, uh, I, whenever you talk, I, I try to listen as much as possible. All right. So we got choices and conflict resolution. Is there anything else? Yeah, I, I think I think there's another uh, trait or sub trait um, that is revealed. It reveals your character, and I think it's in confidence that we exhibit in our process, not our results. Let me say it a different way. So most of us are con constantly, when it comes to our lives, see life at, or confidence in producing a result. Listen, when it comes to character development, you have to trust the process because the results may not happen overnight. You've got to be confident in the things that you're doing, the way that you're doing them are ultimately going to change your life and those around you. And it may not happen overnight. We're so dead gun fast to need things that when it requires time and patience and perseverance and, you know, us saying no to ourselves, we're not interested. But the fact of the matter is we have got to be confident, it's not, not necessarily just in the result, but in the process. And that's hard, Jim. It's really, really hard to be confident. Now, we can get confident once we've had a result, but committing ourselves to a process and really, hey, you know what? This may not happen overnight because it's not going to. This development of good character takes time and it takes daily decisions and it takes right choices. So be confident in that process and participation in that process and the results will happen. And uh, I, I think that we talk about confidence and results constantly, but I, I think if we're mindful of confidence when it comes during the process, even though we don't see it, we don't see it like we don't think we're getting any better, but we just have to confidently keep doing the right things and ultimately we'll get the results that we want. Yeah, um, we talk about confidence quite a bit in our coaching. And uh, especially from a sales perspective, right? Right. And uh, and you don't get confidence from the result. It's not the way it works. Um, we get confidence through, and, and the reason we don't have confidence normally is fear. Fear is the underlying factor that causes this lack of confidence. And in order to overcome fear, I have to first identify that fear is there. Secondly, I have to get uh, competence. I have to become competent at whatever it is that I'm doing. And so if it's this process of getting to a, 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 a man or woman of good character or to be better at sales or to be a better leader, um, we have to get the skills. We have to practice those skills. And so we have to repeat them. We have to use them. We have to do them over and over and over again. And like you said, that result doesn't always happen at the snap of a finger. Sometimes we're talented and things do go pretty well the way we want them to, but sometimes um, even though we want something to be bad enough, it doesn't happen for us. We're just not gifted in that particular thing. But if we trust the process and we execute that process over and over, my example of this is after that whole shift in the way I approach things, it didn't just um, not get better. It got worse. Um, I lost people. Yeah. I had tons of people uh, call me fake. Um, it, it, it attacked that character. It attacked this person that I wanted to become and, and uh, who I wanted to be because I had been another way for so long. Everybody knew me as that thing. And so you have to have consistent action over a period of time before people start to trust and believe that, hey, there was a change in this person. And uh, I'm starting to believe it. He's been doing it for like five years now. 
uh, and I haven't seen any deviation. So it uh, might take somebody that long for them to realize that you're genuine and authentic about it. Um, have you noticed any of that in your world? Like, yeah, no things? doubt. And you know, but here I would encourage people to think about this. You cannot be doing this to get the approval of man. This is about you becoming approval with your authentic self, right? And if I say nothing that matters to anybody on, on this broadcast today, that's critical. You know, we have, we spend our lives seeking approval from everybody, but the people that matter, right? I mean, I want my wife to be approved with me, but I want, I, you know, I can't allow approval from others to dictate my steps and choices. I can't do it. And so, so what I would ask that you to hear today is just that, you know, you've got to take into account making the right decisions so that the inner man that's screaming at you will finally be satisfied and you can move forward. Wow, uh, that was awesome. Um, so the approval of others cannot dictate the choices you make. Because, they shouldn't. Because if they do, it's not authentic anymore and your inner man is screaming at you going, hey, this isn't it. And, right. and, and whatever you call that, your inner man, your conscience, God, right. uh, whatever that is for you and, and who you are out there as a listener, if you take nothing else away from this today, that was power. That, that gives so, you power. And it's one okay. thing you have control over. 100%. So I, 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 let me in, interrupt just for a second, Jim. Uh, it, it, so I, I think it's this. Think about what motivates our lives, right, when it comes to being approved. You know, but you let, let's say you've gone and done something really great and everybody tells you how great you are and it's like sugar rush. Once it's over, you're back to you, right? And you're sitting in a hotel room in Houston, Texas, like I'm doing right now. And listen, if you want to know who the real you is, get away from everybody Get in a place by yourself and turn the TV off, turn everything off around you and just listen to what you hear coming out of your own inner dialogue. Listen, people can approve me to the to the ends of the earth. I searched for that. I had a deficit in me that wanted that. But at the end of the day, when everybody was gone and all the crowd had clamored, it was just me in this dadgum hotel room. Reggie was there. And you know what? I didn't like him because there was that development of character that nobody or lack of development that nobody could see. But when I got by myself with just me, boy, the screaming went on. And so I'm not saying we don't need approval from people, but when that becomes your motivation and it causes you not to be in touch with and motivate yourself to make the character decisions and choices you need to make, it's not the right path and the right voice to listen to. Well, I think you hit something really important there. I think it's why people don't want to be alone. People don't want to be alone because they're going to hear themselves. They're going to That's hear right. themselves uh, resonating over and over and over again, that inner voice talking to them. And, uh, and I think that's why we feel we need to be around others all the time because then we don't get that pause. You have to take that pause. It's one of those things that why you see so many people talk about meditation. Um, I, I, I meditate. It's one of those things where I know I need to get quiet. I need to think. I need to reflect because I have to answer that question on a daily basis. Am I okay with me? And uh, most of the time, the answer is pretty good. Like, I like it. Every once in a while, the answer comes up. I'm like, what are you doing, Jim? Come on, man. You know better. And if I don't have that quiet, that time, um, I don't get that opportunity. Uh, one of the guys that's really good at that, I don't know how well you know him, but Heath Hicks intentionally puts those things in his world so that he has to get away from everybody and be in a place that is an opportunity to reflect so that he can center himself and uh, and listen to that inner voice. It looks like you got something you, you want to add. Well, that's a wow moment for me. I mean, just repeat, I, I had not prepared that. It's just like, one of these in the moment kind of conversation that we've just had, but that's a powerful truth. And the powerful truth is the only person we don't want to be alone with ourselves is ourselves because <laughs> that conversation generally ain't good. Yeah. You know, when I'm by myself and I mean, sometimes my engines just don't shut down 
And the last few things that I hear before I go to bed is all my deficiencies, not always, but most of my deficiencies and the problems and the challenges. And I, I want that guy shut up. And so that was a, a powerful moment for us right there. And I hope that the, that the guys watching this show will see that. Look, that's where you need, you know, your character is developed and good when you can deal with yourself alone in a hotel in Houston, Texas, and know all is good. Hey, Amen, brother. That's it. <laughs> that, that's that, powerful. Hey, we, we hadn't even talked about that before. That was like uh, through conversation, we kind of came to some yeah. realization there. I, I enjoy that. Um, Reggie, anything else? Is, is there anything else that we, we want to talk about? Sub traits, uh, character, inner, inner voice or inner man? Uh, anything else that you want to leave the audience with today? So here's what I would leave with you. Um, if you lack security, you feeling secure, whether you're alone or you're in a crowd, walk with integrity because integrity develops security. It might not overnight, but it will cause you to feel more secure about your life. And I think the theme of this call has been now us realizing we've got to get it right with us. Right. And so good character and development of character starts with that moment. Listen, because for those of us who walk crooked and are out of bounds and are doing the wrong things, let me say clearly, you're going to be found out <laughs> and you're going to be revealed. And all of this hype and all of this noise around you, when you get out of the presence of people that goes away, that you feel is going to resonate and find a landing place in other people's lives around you that they're going to recognize. So stop the madness, gather yourself, Make better choices. Be confident in the process. Resolve conflict more fairly with people, and your life's going to change. Hey, and Jim, with that, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> so I, I've learned a lot from Reggie over this last uh, year and somewhat in, in our contractor fellowship group. I'm going to put out a shameless plug for that. If you're a contractor out there, you're looking for a place where you can share, talk openly, feel safe. Right. Um, figure this whole thing out with uh, uh, this this path with God. Um, whether you are a man of faith or not, all are welcome with us. Find us on Facebook. It's Contractor Fellowship. Uh, reach out to me personally uh, on Facebook, and, and we'll get you invited. And uh, and meet with us once a week. We meet once a week in a men's group. We we talk about these things that are really intense, and we help each other each and every week get through that week. And uh, Reggie, you have helped me tremendously get through my weeks. And uh, I am grateful and thankful for you to be a part of that. Um, I feel the same way about you. So, so if, you're, if you're looking for a man of character to deliver your uh, building supply needs, uh, <laughs> how does somebody get a hold of, of Reggie Brock uh, and uh, talk with him about maybe finding out a little bit more about how Beacon uh building products, right? Like we have a little name, name brand uh, change, uh, Beacon Building Products. How, how would they get a hold of you? So they can always, everybody can reach me by phone at 817-908-0808 uh, or my email is Reggie and that's R-E-G-G-I-E dot Brock at B-E-C-N dot com. They can get a hold of me and we'll uh, help them any way we possibly can. Reggie, I always ask three questions. Are you okay for a few more minutes? Sure. I always ask three questions of my guests and I didn't prepare you for this and I try not to prepare you because I'd like you to just answer authentically. Um, what's your what's your greatest achievement today? Uh, not getting married and having kids like that's easy when we all know that's number one. What's yep. the greatest achievement otherwise? I, ref I refused to quit 11 years ago and my life has totally uh, been uh, reversed, right? And so a bunch of mistakes. And there's a moment in my life in uh, March of 2009 um, where everything changed for me. And, you know, I decided that I wasn't going to quit. I rebounded that I got went on this achievement of my life. That's awesome. Um, I think that's a big achievement for uh, most people, just not quitting. It's so easy yeah. to. Uh, there's, this world is a tough place. It's hard. 
beats on us every day. And there's all kinds of opportunity to use the excuses and place blame for us to quit. That's, that's powerful. All right, um, second question. Best advice you've ever gotten from a mentor or coach or somebody you respect? Um, I mean, there's been a lot of it, but I think it really goes back to what I said, I was talking about earlier. I had a guy tell me one time and I, I honestly don't even remember his name. That just shows you the power sometimes that we have that we don't even recognize. But he said this, you're enough. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't understand. He said, everything you are, everything you're not is enough to deal with the life you've been given. That's the best advice I've ever got. Um, I, I'm, I'm on board with that one. That would be in my top three or four for sure. Um, it was a, it was a big realization for me that I was enough. Um, I, you, you mentioned the, this winning aspect of things, right? I am an uber, uber competitive individual. I, off the charts, worst possible person to ever play against in high school or college sports. Um, cause not only if I won, I would tell you how much I won <laughs> and, uh, it, it, it was, it was bad. And if I felt like I got wronged, I let everybody know, uh, that I was yeah. wrong. Um, and so I have this uber competitive spirit and I still believe not everybody deserves a trophy. Um, you, you deserve a trophy if you, if you've earned it. Um, but I also have realized that, um, no matter how much I think I can win, there's always somebody that's probably going to beat me. And you know what? I'm enough. That's okay. Um, I just do my thing uh, the way I've been uh, guided uh, to do, and everything's going to be okay. Um, and I can deal with whatever comes up. Oh, man, this first quarter of the year has been a, a whatever quarter for my for my world for sure. And uh, I come through it, and I'm like, all right, we're good to go. I, I, like I just I'm so at peace with with who I am and, uh, and you've helped me become even better with that. So I appreciate that. Great advice. You're enough. Um, last and final question. We only have so much time on this planet, right? At some point it's going to come to an end. It is literally just a pinprick in the timeline of eternity. Um, and, uh, and when we go, Oh, there's normally a gathering of folks to celebrate, uh, I hope, the life of that person. How do you want those people to remember Reggie? You know, I would hope that they would say he made us better. And, you know, he made me a better husband, a better wife. He made me a better uh, son. He made me a better friend. Uh, and we're going to miss the betterment that he put into our lives. Because if I can help other people, uh, and this has not always been the case for me. I mean, I didn't give a crap. I mean, I'm just like, I'm going to win and I want what's best for me and mine and, you know, whatever else happens, happens. But as you get older and you start seeing life a little bit differently, and, you know, my hope is that you don't, my, my, my thought would be to tell you, you don't have to wait till you get old to figure this out. But I just want people, when they encounter me, uh, to walk away feeling better than when we first met. That's uh, you, you well on your way, brother. No doubt about that. Um, that's if that time was to come for you, um, that's exactly how I would see you. Um, you've made me a better person, and uh, I'm grateful for uh, that fact and, and our fellowship. It's uh, it's super cool to me. Thanks for being on the show today. Um, this is powerful. I have a feeling this one might get downloaded a few times. Um, it's, it's one of those things that I think really resonates with people. They don't take enough time to think about and consider sometimes. And, uh, when they hear it, they may take that pause. They may take that time to listen. And, uh, and thanks for sharing with us today. Yeah. And my hope is that people will realize that what, what they're going through right now is not, does not have to be the end of the story. And, you know, they can reshape, but you've got, you, you really have to spend your time looking inward and, and, and finding out what's missing internally. And you got to turn the noise down to the outside community to make that happen sometimes. So, you know, my hope is that character will be revealed and that character will be developed 
and that men and women across this country after listening to broadcast realize there's still hope for that to happen. There is hope. Absolutely awesome, Reggie. There is hope, um, and uh, there is no doubt about that for me. Um, I, I have that hope myself through my faith. I know you do as well. Um, I hope others find that same hope uh, through us and, uh, and through their path and their journey. Um, it is why I'm here. It's why I do what I do. Thanks a lot, man. Really appreciate it. And, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get out of here. I want to, I want to finish up with a little bit of wrap up and, uh, I'll get back with you in just a second. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks brother. Wow. Man, that was a, a contractor radio episode for the ages right there. Um, like I said, man, there's a reason. I uh, brought Reggie on today. Uh, the man is a fountain of wisdom. He changes lives on a daily basis just through his interactions with folks and his thoughtfulness and mindfulness. And uh, once again, I, I can't say enough how grateful I am for him. Um, if you were listening there, um, character, you have a choice. It can be good or bad. And if you aren't feeling fulfilled, um, make sure to take the time to get by yourself and listen to that inner voice, your inner man. And what is it that uh, is being said to you that uh, you may need to choose a different path? And if you choose that different path, think about your choices and each choice that you make after that and this journey that you're on and realize that a bad choice does not determine your character. It's multiple bad choices put together. Um, and which do you make more of, the good ones or the bad ones? Conflict resolution and, and how do you handle that? Do you look at uh, everything as a battle and you have to win it? Or is there a possibility that you could own some of the blame? Maybe there's nobody to blame. Or if the blame is on the other person, um, that you could gain a better understanding through questions and having genuine conversation because you care for that person. Um, last uh, but not least is have confidence in the process. It's not easy. Um, it's something that we do over and over and over again. If we want to become men of good character, or women of good character, um, we have to trust the process. And uh, if you have any doubts in that process, join us in Contractor Fellowship. Uh, come see us here at Contractor Coach Pro. It's one of the things we do, uh, which makes us a bit unique is, you know, we're very focused on the business, but we carry that character, that belief that doing it right is the choice to make, to set yourself apart from the masses that are out there because it's harder to be the person that makes the right choices. It's easy to make the bad choices. Uh, and when something's harder, it becomes more valuable and people want to, are drawn to it. They're, they're, it's like a magnet. And so your good character will draw people of good character. Your bad character will draw people of bad character and realize the importance of that um, uh, effect. The thing that he said at the end that I thought was really insightful was integrity develops security. This time of being quiet and really thinking who you are and approaching life through integrity, you sleep better. And that's one of those things. I, I never wanted to be walking to a grocery store, be in a neighborhood, be in a group or gathering where I felt like I needed to hang my head, avoid somebody, anything like that. And the only thing that allows me to have that approach to life and the world itself is this concept of I'm a man of integrity and I will continue to make more good choices than bad choices. I'm not perfect by any means, but uh, if you take one thing away, um, find that security that you're looking for. If you're feeling doubt and worry and that you're just not fulfilled in what it is that you're doing, integrity is where it starts. What an awesome show today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close out with one of our sponsors, uh, Signpost. If you haven't checked them out and you're trying to gain a great reputation, uh, Signpost is amazing at helping you build a great reputation with your clients. Want more five-star reviews from your customers? At Signpost, we make it easy for your customers to give you great reviews on Google, Facebook, Yelp, and more. Our software connects with industry-specific solutions driving even more reviews from your customers. Drive loyalty and repeat business by sending the right messages at the right times to your prospects and customers. Message your contacts from anywhere, anytime, using text, photos, and video, all in one app. 
Check on progress with campaigns and review generation across Google, Facebook, and Yelp. Visit signpost.com and get your demo today. Hey, thanks everybody for joining us on Contractor Radio. I'm your host, Jim Johnson, the head coach at Contractor Coach Pro. And if you want to find out more how to build your business and build your business with strong character, that by doing it right, you build a sustainable business that lasts forever if you want it to, and you want to get control of your business so you can grow your business and find that personal and financial freedom that you're after, check us out at contractorcoachpro.com. Click on the assessment button, take the assessment where we can learn a little bit more about you and we'll do a free uh, strategy call with you and talk to you about your business and your life and hopefully give you something valuable that day. If you want to become a client, that's great. But in every interaction, we're there to serve you. And we hope that we serve you that day. Thanks a lot for listening to Contractor Radio and we'll see you again next week. Thank you.